<laughs> oh, it's working! Okay, that was the secret trick. I need to It did something! That's a good sign! Alright, positive's hooked up, negative's hooked up. Where's the key for this thing? Alright, so I bought one of these uh, cheap eBay ignitions. It's not the stock motorcycle keys, but at least it's a key. Hopefully this thing turns on. <laughs> nice! Nice, look at that. Why are my turn signals flashing? Neutral light is on. We should be hearing, hearing the fuel pump. So I don't know why we're not hearing the fuel pump uh, kick on when I turn the ignition on, or when I turn the engine on. So fault indicator, we don't have all the sensors hooked up to it, so that's not the end of the world. This isn't doing anything when I turn it on or off, but I'm going to kick the engine over and just see what happens. It's on. It's in neutral. It might be that maybe the clutch sensor is not... I don't know. These things are always super finicky with the clutch sensor, the kickstand sensor, so... White is the clutch switch. Black and yellow, black and white. So I don't know if you guys remember, but with the CBR 1000 engine, I had an absolute nightmare trying to get that thing to at least turn on. It took me like four days of, you know, searching through wires to get to finally get that thing to turn on. Fuel pump's not kicking over still. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's working! Okay, that was the secret trick. I needed to plug those two stupid sensors in. So, but why is the fuel pump not... I don't, I don't hear it doing anything. At least it turns over. So here, here's the, the huge question of, is it getting a spark? Can you guys see that? Not really, you're just gonna have to trust me if it's working. No spark. FI light is back on, flashing, and we don't have a spark. All right, what is not working? Is there a kickstand sensor on this? GP sensor, there's actually, wait a minute, there's this. Hang on, hang on, hang on. There's the tilt sensor. That has to be up. Still no spark. Let me check for kickstand sensor. Kickstand switch is bypassed. I also found a different, uh, the temperature sensor. Still, still no spark. So I believe when your fault indicator light is flashing, if it's on, it just means that a sensor is not working properly. If it's flashing, it means it's a much more serious issue. You know what? Give me a moment. I'm going to check the fuses, check some stuff on the wiring, and I'll be right back with hopefully it working. All right, so I figured out how to uh, have this thing pull up error codes. Basically, it's just uh, this little plug right here. You have to take the cap off and then take a wire, shove it in there, and then it will pull up error codes. Now, the error code that it was saying was, uh, where was it? It was C42, which is ignition switch signal anti-theft. 
We've had this issue in the past. Now, for those who don't know what this is, let me kind of quickly explain this. Some motorcycles, not all of them, but some of them have an anti-theft feature where there's a little there's a little microchip or some like little sensor in here, something like that. I don't know what it is. That uh, that the ignition has to sense that 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 chip is in the key and the key is near it. Otherwise, it won't work. It's for anti-theft. It makes it to where you can't really hotwire this thing. It has to have the key next to this for it to actually work. Even though you can turn it on, it'll turn over. It has to sense that little chip for it to get a spark. And hopefully, hopefully that's the reason our fuel pump isn't priming. So, the, and this ignition that I bought, it was uh, one of those super cheap ones on eBay. But this is for an 07 Hayabusa, so I thought it would have that little chip. I'm, I was a little tempted to, I don't know, I may cut this key apart and see if that chip is in here. So, great, mosquito. Go away. So this being for a, for this engine, I thought that it would have that little chip in the keys, but apparently not, so because it's pulling up the error code. So I went on eBay and bought a Suzuki brand ignition, an actual an actual ignition for this thing, which was 230 bucks. That's why that's why I bought the cheap one because this was like 40 bucks, but apparently it's not good enough and won't work. So whenever the new key, key gets here, hopefully that'll make it to where we're getting a spark, and hopefully. It makes it to where the fuel pump primes and hopefully you don't need a new fuel pump. But at least it's working, at least it's turning on and turning over. Now, before we do anything else, I really want to do a test of compression on these on the cylinders. That'll really tell us the condition of the cylinder walls and everything. It's getting if it's getting good compression. So yeah, let me take this off and, and do a compression test. I'm really hoping it's uh really hoping it's good. Alright. Let's test cylinder number one first. Throttle wide open. One eighty. <laughs> That's good. That is a good sign. One eighty. That is good. Can you see that? Hopefully. All right. Cylinder number three. Here we go. Throttle wide open. Nice. Same thing. One eighty. All right. Cylinder number four. Here we go. Throttle wide open. Nice! Slightly above 180. So awesome! That is a good sign. I need to look in the manual to see what it actually should be for this engine. But I believe 180 is should should that should be good for an engine like this. Alright, here it is. So compression pressure at sea level. I know I'm above sea level, so standard is. 174 to 200, 232 PSI. Wow. Okay, so ours being at 180 is a little bit above 174, so that's kind of on the low side between these numbers, but... So the compression test is not great, but it's not terrible. It should hopefully run, but... Let's start working on the wiring box that this thing needs. Now, I've been really trying to think, like, where's the best spot for a wiring box? And I think right here. There's all this empty space. The passenger doesn't need all this leg room. So I think having a battery box that's like, you know, goes down to maybe this, goes across this whole thing. And I kind of want it to where the panel that goes over this, we take it off to access the wiring box, but then it's sealed on all the other sides. Also want it to make it to where it's not, uh, not waterproof, but at least water resistant. I don't expect to go snorkeling with this thing, but I at least want it to where when we drive through a puddle, most of the water can't get in the wiring box and it's mostly protected from dust and everything. So now, first thing is let's let's install the, the dashboard right here, dash slight dashboard right here and on the other side. Then we can figure out how big of a battery box we need and how we're installing it in the frame.
Alright, check it out. The wiring box is all tacked together. This kind of took me a ridiculous amount of time figuring out how to do this, how to get this to where I can bolt this in the frame, but then be able to remove it. I was originally thinking of being able to remove it, you know, pulling it out from the top, but after looking at it, it's like, nah, it's not gonna, so I have to pull it out, you know, from the bottom. I tried to make this as big as possible and have as much room in here for all the wires, but I also try to make it to where we can still easily remove this from the frame without having to disassemble uh, a lot of stuff and make it to where it uh, fits well in place and make it to where when the cover that goes, because I am putting a cover over this whole thing, when I put that on, I want this whole battery box to be sealed, so therefore I'm not worried about riding this thing in the rain. Anyway, tomorrow I'll remove this from the frame. We got to fully weld this thing together, which is probably going to take a long time to do. And then we can start working on figuring out where all the wires are going. Alright, wiring box is done. Now how I'm planning on sealing these surfaces right here is I found this stuff on Amazon. It's called sealing strip and basically just goes in place just like that, push it, push it on, and then that will create a seal once the top cover is put into place. Now, like I've been saying, I really want to do the wiring on this project properly this time instead of just having the wiring harness of the motorcycle engine just zip tied in a bundle and either sitting on the hot engine or zip tied to the side of the frame. I really want to have the wiring on this project properly done this time, so therefore I've been buying a lot of electrical stuff uh, lately. Most of this stuff is from Amazon. I found this, which is just a terminal with a bunch of fuses. Found uh, big terminal bus bars, smaller terminal bus bars. Oh, I found this, which is actually going to be cool. You can mount this to the side of the frame and then connect these to the positive and negative of the battery. So therefore, if you ever have to jump start this vehicle, you just hook to this and you don't have to hook to the actual battery itself. So that would actually be kind of cool, having uh, terminals on the outside of the frame. Also found this, which is a bunch of uh, relays with its own designated fuses. I'll be using this for all the lights, light bars, and all that kind of stuff, so that'll be kind of cool. Also, I found this. This is kind of a cool engine start button. It also lights up. Now, a huge question that I keep asking myself while building this wiring box is, am I trying to fit all of the wiring in here? Mainly what I'm talking about is am I trying to fit the motorcycle wiring harness in this wiring box or I could fit, I could build another wiring box more towards the engine but there's really not a good spot for it. It'd have to be either really small or have to be on top of the gas tank which that's, I'd rather not have a, another aluminum box on top of the gas tank. That's not really, really the only downside to having the motorcycle wire harness in here is having to run all the wires for, for the engine through the chain tunnel up to the engine, which I counted. There's really not that many. There's only around 35 wires for all the sensors for the engine, plus the big wire for the starter motor. So there's really not that many wires. And I think it'd be just a lot easier and a lot better to have the motorcycle wire harness in here and just better protected and not have another box, not to have another thing on the back end of this thing, so plus it would also get hot being close to the engine, so I think it's just better just to have here. Another question is, am I trying to fit the battery in here as well? I kind of want to lay everything out in here and make sure there's enough room for the battery, the 
relays, the wiring harness for the engine, plus the, the controller for the power steering and the winch. I want to lay everything out in there and just make sure there's enough, there's enough room and if not, I can always figure out a different place for the battery. Because I think it's just going to be a little bit more convenient having the battery in here, but I just want to make sure there's enough room for it. So, And I'm pretty sure these are the kind of batteries that are, you can put them outside. It's one of those non-spillables. Yeah, I think there's enough room for the battery. Possibly even mount these up here. So I'm going to be using these bigger terminals to, you know, connect uh, the power steering, the winch, you know, all the power for this and the power for this. So, so I think next, let me work on the cover that's going to go over this. Because to do that, I need to weld tabs right here, and I don't want to weld one, you know, right here once all the wiring is finished, so I think I should do that now before the, we start working on wiring. Plus, I want to add uh, certain tabs for stuff like this, so for, you know, to bolt stuff to the side, have tabs to bolt this into place, you know, bolt this to the wall, bolt this stuff right here, make, you know, mounts for the battery so it's not sliding around. So I think let's do that now, because we're definitely not going to get to the actual wiring in this video. So this video is more just preparing for wiring. So I put all the wiring back together and plugged everything in because the new key that I bought for this thing uh, finally got here in the mail. This is an actual Suzuki brand part. I was going to try to buy one off of 2007, but I couldn't find one. So all I could really find that wasn't insanely expensive was from a 2003, and apparently this does have the anti-theft chip in it. I'm hoping it does. So let's plug this thing in and see if this solves the issue of not getting a spark. So, that's good, it turns on. So the FI lights is not flashing, it just says check. Do I have that wire still in there? I don't. So, so let's take one of these out, put a spark plug in. 
And I'm hoping this will also fix the issue of our fuel pump is not, isn't priming as well. So this will hopefully fix the not getting a spark and our fuel pump not priming. Where's, here it is. FI light still says just check. It's not on, it's not flashing, so that's good. You can definitely hear a relay doing something when I turn the engine to its on position. So, and that is normally when the fuel pump primes and the fuel pump is, isn't, but at least the solenoid is, or, okay, let's see if it'll, see if it's getting a spark. I'm pretty sure it's these two. All right, clutch should be bypassed. FI light just turned off, so. Fuel pump still isn't priming, but a, a relay is doing something. getting a spark it's working but our fuel pump still isn't priming so is it just not plugged in right the relay for it you can hear it is turning over the FI lights back on but it is getting a spark which is good but our fuel pump still isn't working so is it a relay or is it a solenoid? I can never remember the difference. I think a solenoid is different. I think it's a relay. It's also, I know you guys can't see this, but when I move this, uh, it should be, it should, it should be moving the, the, the fuel gauge, right? And it's not doing anything. Let me, uh, yellow and red and black and white. So those two are the power. Let's see if those are getting anything. All right, while I'm holding this, I need somebody to flip the switch. Can somebody do that for me? No? Okay, I'll do it myself. Can you guys see that? When I turn it off, and then turn it back on, it gets nine point something volts. Oops. So the relay is working, and it's getting nine volts, but it's not... Is it supposed to get 12 volts? Is that why it's not working? I don't know. Yeah, 9.9 .9 volts. And when you hear the re the relay kick on, that's when it comes on. So, do we have a bad fuel pump? I know one way to test. Now we know what are the what wires are what. So either this is gonna burn out the motor because I'm basically bypassing the whole harness and going directly from the battery to the pump. It's either going to burn out the motor or do something. It's not doing anything. So what what does that mean? That means we may have a bad fuel pump. Great. So good news and bad news. Good news is it now works. It's getting a spark, but we can't get it to run because we don't have a working fuel pump. It is getting 9 volts, 9.9 .9 volts, but does it need 12 volts? When I hooked it up to 12 volts, it still didn't do anything, but there was a lot of sparks, which means it could be shorting out. But if it's shorting out, why isn't the fuse blowing? I don't know, just more mysteries, more, you know, this is the annoying part of fuel injection, is figuring out all the gremlins and working those out. But then once you work those out, these things are flawless. So, I just looked up on eBay, and I can buy another used fuel pump uh, for $400. They're around, you know, around $350, $400 bucks for another used fuel pump. Or, I did see that they have these aftermarket, the little pump itself, and not the whole rest of it. They do have those for 40 bucks, but those are aftermarket. I'm looking at them and it's like, each one looks different. Comes with different stuff. They all look, it's a, so I'm not really sure if those would work, but they all say they're for an 07 Hayabusa. But for some reason, some of them look different than others. So I'm not really sure which one I would need or if that would even work. So before I buy anything, I kind of want to, be, because who knows? It may just be stuck. Cause, uh, Cause we know it's getting power we know the level sensor's working. I thought it wasn't working at first, but apparently the needle is just really slow moving. 
So we know it's getting power, so maybe it's just stuck, and maybe if I take it apart and soak it in gasoline, or maybe diesel, or maybe my ultrasonic parts cleaner, I don't know, maybe if I clean it, we can get it to uh, get it to free up and get it to actually work. So before, yeah, so before I buy anything, I kind of want to try and fix this one and see if we can get it working, but uh, at least our new key is working, it's getting a spark, it's turning over, the fuel pump is trying to prime, so we are getting really close to finally being able to get this. Uh, I'll be honest, I was, I was kind of expecting to be able to get this thing running in this video. For some reason, I always underestimate how long stuff is going to take. And I, yeah, I really thought that we were going to get this thing running in this video. But uh, yeah, next video of this project, we'll try to finish the wiring box, get all that finalized, start running the wires up to, from there, up to the engine, finalize the gas tank. Hopefully get this fuel pump working, and if not, I'll just either buy a new one or try and see if one of those aftermarket ones will work. And then hopefully, we can try and actually get this thing to fire up for the first time. But, uh, anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video.